The purpose of this video is to cover the uh, TALUS Transparent Encryption Live Data Transformation feature, or LDT for short. So LDT is about the ability to encrypt data while it's online, as well as rotate the data encryption key, keeping the data online. And that can be done at any point in time or scheduled at a future date. I currently have two hosts that have the Transparent Encryption Agent installed in it. One is a Windows host and it's Win Server 1. Let's quickly take a look at that host. So on this host, I've created a directory with some, some information. Um, it's various files. It's got some comma delimited files, some PDF documents, some Excel spreadsheets, uh, just various information that represents what might be running in your environment. Let's take a quick look at one of those files. As an example, like I said, this is just a comma delimited file and it just has you know particular information that might be of sensitive nature. The nature of the data doesn't really matter. I mean, in fact, what we encrypt with transparent encryption is files. The type of file really doesn't matter. It's the content of the files of what we're encrypting. And we encrypt the entire file. So all the contents of the file are encrypted. It doesn't matter whether it's a PDF document or a comma delimited document or a database file like a, a SQL Server MDF or LDF data file or a DB2 or Oracle or you know you, you can name it. It doesn't matter whether it's structured or unstructured. What we encrypt and control access to are files. So now that we know where the data we're going to be encrypting is, let's go create a key and policy to manage access to this data. So I'm going to start with the creation of a policy. And when you create a policy, there's a number of types and we're going to select uh, live data transformation as the type of policy we want to create. Whenever you create a live data transform policy, you always get an initial rule. And this initial rule is about uh, applying LDT or key rotation. That's the only thing that's, that this rule is there for, and it's just by default in the policy. Let's add some additional security rules. So I'm, adding, I'm going to add an additional rule that says permit and apply key and I'm going to allow all operations and when I leave things blank that means all so for every file in the guard point and that includes any subdirectory of files in the guard point for every user for every process for all operations we're going to permit and apply the key I'm going to add one more security rule which is my catch-all rule if no rule of the policy was met, then we trigger the last rule's effect. So rules are evaluated in order. Rule number one is for key rotation, so we could ignore that one. Rule number two essentially says for everything, permit and apply the key. So I'm not doing any access control with this rule, so I will definitely meet this rule. And rule number three says if it didn't meet these two rules, it will meet rule number three, which is to deny the I.O. Okay. If no rule is met, then the default behavior is deny, but no audit record will be generated. So I always like to keep, you know, keep, create this rule as the last rule in every policy I create. So now that I have some rules, I need to create a key rule. And a key rule is basically what key do I apply to this data? Well, I need to specify the current state of the data. Well, the current state is it's unencrypted. And to represent unencrypted data, there's a, there's a default key called clear key. So we're going to read the data applying the clear key or no key or unencrypted key. Right. And we're going to encrypt the data with a new key. Now, to, before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and create a new key or a new LDT key to use. And when I create the key this way, 
it does set the correct key attributes to be used as an LDT key. It is a symmetric AES 256-bit key. It's just the attributes of the key make this a versioning key. And a versioning key is an LDT key um, so that I can, if I want to rotate the key in the future. Okay, now I have my key rule. And so I get a summary. Fundamentally, I've got three rules and a key rule to be applied to the policy. Before I go on, let me just go take a quick look at that key. And you can see I'm currently at version zero of the key. Now if I look at the key, um, you know, the key has certain attributes. You know, one of them it being it's being exportable. And by exportable, I mean it can be sent to the agent. The key access is being allowed to CTE clients. And the key label designates it as a version key. So you could create a key, you know, via just going via the method of just going here and creating a key. But if you're going to use it with transfer and encryption, you have to, at a minimum, set those attributes to be true. LDT policy to use the key. Or you can create the new key while creating the policy and it automatically sets these attributes. Go back to transparent encryption. And now we're going to create a guard point using that policy. So I'll select my LDT policy. And I'm going to browse the path. And I could just type the path in if I want. Or I'm going to browse the remote file system and choose the path and directory that I want to protect. So this directory will be my guard point, which means when I apply the policy and the LDT um, key, then all the files in that directory and every, sub, and every subdirectory will be encrypted uh, using that key and protected with this policy. All right, I successfully created the guard point, and I just need to refresh a few times, and this will go active, and the LDT rekeying operation will kick off as well. Okay, as you can see, rekeying has started, and this will not take very long because there's not a great deal of data. Uh, but as soon as the rekeying process has kicked off, I can then access the data. I can start databases. Um, I don't have to wait till the rekey is complete to start accessing the data. We'll take care of, you know, rekeying the data in the background while keeping the data on, knowing exactly what to crypt and decrypt. So let's go take a look at that host. check the status of the guard points. So you can see my guard point and the configured state and the guarded state. And I can check the status of LDT. So you can see that I can list the files that were encrypted and the first part of the list shows you the name of the key and the version of the key that's used to protect that file. And There's some other things you can do to query the status or find out the state, but if, if we're in the middle of rekeying, then the, this state will be, you know, rekeying. If the status is complete, then it will say rekeyed. This didn't take very long. It took approximately six seconds to rekey all these data. Now, those, that, all those data is now encrypted with version zero of the key. To perform a key rotation is very simple. You can go directly to the key. I'm at version zero. 
can add a new version of the key and by version of the key I mean it is a brand new key it's a new AES 256-bit key but the key name doesn't change and any policy that uses that key across any number of hosts will automatically kick off a rekey operation uh, that will be kicked off in the background so if we go back out to that host we run the report again and you can see the rekey state is, is already rekeyed and we're now at version 1 of the key and that's all there is to rotation of the key I can also I can also create a schedule to rekey on a time frame every six months once a quarter yearly to create the schedule you go back out to the GUI go to schedules create add a new schedule perform a key rotation and I can start that rotation in the future So let's do it January 1st, 2024. Schedule goes on forever and repeats yearly on the 1st of January at 12 a.m. And so now I have a, a schedule for annual key rotation of that key. So essentially this key, the latest version of the key, will be rotated annually. Anyway, that's the way you set it up.